talk to you about muscle training. I said I was going to do this video, so my apologies in the delay. Uh, Marie Moore from Adelaide, uh, this is for you. Um, there are quite a few different muscles uh, that are available on the market. Um, I've bought some here. This one here is my dog Zuka's muzzle. So as you'll see, the muzzles that we recommend are a full box muzzle, cage muzzle. Um, you can call them lots of different things, but the ones that we recommend are a nice big full muzzle. Okay, so you can get the ones like this. Um, this is designed uh, for a Rottweiler because it's flexible for their big wolf heads to fit in there. Then we've got this one here. Okay, so again, it's a full muzzle. Okay. And this is obviously better suited to a dog with a finer muzzle. Um, a cliche would be, say, for example, a Rottweiler versus the big buff head, sorry, a German Shepherd, sorry, versus the buff head of a Rottweiler. So what you want to make sure, first of all, with muzzles is making sure that uh, there's no opportunity or no chance that you're going to be bitten. There are muzzles like this that are available on the market. Okay, a nylon or a fabric muzzle. As you can see, when the dog's muzzle goes through, uh, there is still that opportunity that the dog can bite. Um, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons I don't like this, apart from the obvious safety aspect, is these muzzles are designed to clamp the dog's mouth down. Now that's going to create a huge amount of frustration in the dog. Having their mouth being able to move, pant, um, drink, eat, etc. is one of their base um, forms of uh, movement and their right, obviously. So if we're clamping their, their jaw shut in order for safety, you can imagine how that's going to exacerbate uh, any frustration that the, that the dog's experiencing at that time. So I do prefer the ones where the dogs still have access to breathe freely without any kind of restriction in their mouth um, and where you can put food and that type of thing in there as well. So um, I quite often get asked why do I muzzle train dogs and why do I suggest doing it? Uh, I'm sure you've heard of, of the saying, you know, let's be proactive, not reactive. So I'm always, anytime I'm working with my dog, wanting to make sure that I'm setting them up for the best success possible. So not necessarily do I muzzle train a dog uh, because it has aggressive tendencies or anything like that. But if I can set my dog up or your dog up for success, if a situation would ever arise where you need to muzzle train them, touch wood, it never happens. Let's say, for example, your dog was out and uh, unfortunately got hit by a car and a broken leg. The poor thing is going to be an immense amount of pain and quite scared, fearful with everything that's going on. Now, as we go to render first aid and get the dog to a vet, there is a high chance even the best of dogs will turn around and have a snap uh, during that stressful situation, not to mention how distressed you would be as the owner or um, a witness to that accident. So if a dog has already be pre been pre-trained to accept wearing a muzzle, then you've just completely and utterly alleviated one huge stress factor in that situation. So if we can muzzle train our dogs in such a positive light, they're really going to, you know, if in the situation that they have to be muzzled, it's going to make for a lot, uh, lot more calmful situation for everybody. So the way I like to look at muzzles, again, here's Zuka's here. The way I like to look at Zuka's muzzle, instead of uh, mentally picturing it, oh, it's a muzzle, the dog must bite, etc. I like to look at it as, a, as though it's a food bowl with straps. Okay, most dogs. I would say almost all dogs uh, absolutely love their food bowl. Okay, you won't often see a dog show aversion or avoidance to a food bowl. Quite often they'll hear it and they'll come running. So that's exactly the type of uh, mentality or conditioning that I want for my dogs when I muzzle train them. So um, in a moment I'll get Zucra and you'll see when he sees, sees his muzzle, he just volunteers and puts his muzzle straight in there. And that's purely because when I started the training, I started to train it as though it was just a food bowl with straps. So I'll go through that and demonstrate with it, uh, that with you now. Also, I just wanted to show you this t-shirt. It is so cool. So huge thank you to Ben from Vicon Transfers. Uh, it's got a hashtag on it, our dogs do it better. So that's absolutely awesome. Ben, thank you for sending that through. He's based in New South Wales, sends his stuff all over um, Australia. I'm not sure about internationally. So thank you very much for my t-shirt. And we'll do some filming now with Zuka with his muzzle training. Thanks. So just gonna do some muzzle training with Zuka. So nice and simply, all I do is I've got some food treats here. Just pop that into the muzzle. Good boy. So as you can see, I'm not forcing it on him or anything like that. It's nice and relaxed. We're doing it in the home environment. Good boy. Well done, buddy. So little bits of treats again into the muzzle. Oh, well done.
So it's always a nice association for him. Good boy. Then what we can start to do, um, obviously this would take a little bit slow with a, um, uh, with a dog that hasn't been nozzle trained before. But then what we can start to do is very similar to any type of target training, get him to pop his nose in it. Just, um, and he's got to maintain his nose in there. Come here, buddy. Run this way. Hey, what's this? Good. Yes. And that's his verbal mark. That yes means he's allowed to come out. And there's his reward. So again, good boy. Good. Yes. Well done. And again, you'll notice I changed the angles. Yes. Good boy. Let's try over this way. Good boy. Yes. So you'll notice at no stage have I actually gone to actively put this on him. I haven't tried to use it. <laughs> Good boy. Yes. I haven't tried to put the straps on or anything like that. And you'll notice even if I just start uh, talking here, more than often Zuka will just volunteer the behavior because that's what he repetitively gets rewarded for. Good boy. Yes. So you can see he really enjoys it. Now, if you don't own a muzzle at home at this stage, one of the good ways you can do it, be buddy, he's just knocked it off, excuse me. So this is just a standard garden pot, okay? So you can use PVC piping, a yogurt container, anything like that. It's pretty much exactly the same. It's just getting their muzzle into something that goes around the circumference. So again, good boy. Yes. Hey. Good boy. So this is a great way that you can train it at home with a, just an average um, garden pot. Yes, good boy. You're very clever. I do love you. Oh, that was a chewy piece. Good boy. So as you can see, it's nice and cruisy. It's done at Zuka's pace. Well done. Oh, good boy. <laughs> So you can see I've been uh, rewarding too much with my right hand every time I go to pat him. He thinks I'm giving them that reward. Good boy. Nope. Good. Good boy. Yes. So guys, nice simple little video on how to muzzle train your dog. Again, um, you want your dog to be able to volunteer. So start using your, your muzzles or your containers like, um, uh, as I said, a food bowl with straps, getting your dog to repetitively put their, their muzzle in it. Um, as you slowly progress, maintain the, or get them to start maintaining their, their muzzle in there. Make sure you're rewarding, always nice and positive. You're a funny looking dog. Yes, good boy. And that's the association or the conditioning that you want your dog to have. So no matter what, good boy. Well done, buddy. So they love having their nose in that muzzle. And then that way, uh, should you ever be in the situation for um, safety reasons and to, in order to get your dog some uh, emergency veterinary attention, makes life a heck of a lot easier, not only for yourself, for your dog, but uh, the vet nurses and the vets out there that uh, are doing their best to help your dog. So thanks for watching, guys. Bye.